Okay, so are you? It's now streaming live on YouTube. Are you also recording it? I'll click on the record now. Okay, perfect. Because sometimes you can just, if we don't start it now, we'll forget. I've not seen the YouTube link. Oh. It's now streaming live on YouTube. Are you also recording it? I'll click on the record now. Oh my God. Okay, perfect. Because sometimes you can just, we don't start it now, we forget. I've not seen the YouTube link. Now streaming live on YouTube. Come in. I'm not recording it. Um, Doctor Kereke. Okay. No, don't don't share yet. Uh, it's um, it's Simeon that will share. When we want you to share, we will tell you. There are other things we have to do first. Can you hear me? Um, Dr. Kerrigan. Okay. Just click stop, stop share here. here. At the top of your screen. Uh, it's similar that we share. When we want to share, we'll tell you. There are other things we have to do. Can you hear me? Yeah, stop sharing. Reputation, reputation, all over. Yeah, I don't know why. I need the YouTube link. Uh, what is going on now? Nobody's saying anything. Uh, sorry, uh, we are sorry, we are starting in a moment. Um, just uh, okay. trying to make sure the YouTube link is working. Uh, Moses. Is Moses there?
So, Simeon, are you ready? Hello? Am I being heard? Hello, Dr. Kereke, can you hear me? Am I being heard at all? Yes, sir. I mean, Moses can start. Can start. Can start. Can start. Hello, Simeon. Can you hear me? Can you, can yes. you see the jazz now? Yes, so I think you can start so, so that we don't keep people waiting. Okay. All right. Let's give additional uh, four minutes. We are... We are just okay. meeting in the meeting. Oh, exactly 1745 will start. Okay. So Simeon, I would like you to play uh, the program. There, then. There, also. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Exactly how the movie is. We are like, oh. please, can you display the program? Oh. Is Simeon in the house? Hello, Yam. Please display the program. Display now. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember what. Now the slide two. The second slide. It's going to be Huh? We're going to go on second.
Slide two, slide two. So, so go for the opening remarks. Let's start. Oh, opening prayer. Uh, please let's please let's uh, mute let's mute our microphones. Okay. So Moses, you can call for opening prayer. All right. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Confirm you can hear me clearly. We we yes. can hear you. Good evening. All right, so welcome to the uh, October 2020 monthly technical meeting of the Society of Petroleum Engineers for uh, court uh, session, otherwise known as section 103. So we are a technically driven organization. Our main uh, purpose and vision is to disseminate uh, technical information uh, between or within our membership. And for that, we pride ourselves as a, a, a reservoir of uh, technical knowledge. And today we have uh, very wonderful people who you get to meet along the line in the course of uh, this uh, technical session. And first, for, to start the agenda for today, we are going to start with an opening prayer. And we'd like a volunteer who is not a member of the board or an S official to do the opening prayer. So preferably a young professional to give us the opening prayer. Good evening now. Good evening. Please say your name. In Jesus' name. My name is Emmanuel Akwafwe. All right. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for the grace you have given unto us this hour to be in the land of the living. I also thank you for giving us the privilege for this day, O oh Lord, to organize this particular meeting. Father, we believe that whatever is committed to your hand can never be destroyed. Father, this hour we commit this meeting into the heaven hand. We ask that you will come and take absolute control at the end of it all to be a success. And the glory will be given to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, so thank you, uh, Mr. Mano Akwafwe, for that uh, very wonderful prayer. So we'll move quickly to the next agenda, which is uh, the safety brief and safety moment. So uh, normally it should have been taken by the program's chairman, who is unavoidably absent. So in the absence of the program chairman, I will take uh, the safety moment. So just as we are surviving and coming out gradually, uh, we are not completely out of the COVID-19 pandemic, but as we can all see around us, we are facing another kind of uh, pandemic in the country. So what normally started out as a, a peaceful demonstration against a police brutality has today snowboard into uh, some kind of hoodlums hijacking the agitation and uh, causing mayhem all across the country, uh, mostly in Lagos, and then in some parts of Portacourt and in Aba, in Enugu, wherever, in Joss, all over the country. So the safety moment today will be for uh, self-awareness of your environment, wherever you are, uh, whether it is uh, as a result of you going there to work or you are living around those facilities, you have to be aware then it's also good to uh, watch the news from reliable sources. Uh, we also urge each and every one of us not to disseminate information that we do not think. Once you see an information that is too good to be true, you may have to put in two or three checks to see whether any other medium or media is carrying that same information, and uh, whether it has been verified or validated before you push it out, distribute it to your WhatsApp group. Because the less uh, fear we put out there, the less wrong information we put out there, the safer for every one of us. 
But that does not mean that you should not uh, be wary of what is happening around you, because when you are aware, that helps you to take uh, some steps to safeguard yourself. If it is possible, do not uh, go to the hot zones. If you are in Portacourt River State here, like we, most of us, you should be aware of some places that the governor has already declared a curfew. If you are not aware, take time this evening to try to Google it. Uh, specific places are under curfew in River State. So you make sure that within this period, you plan your activity to stay around from those uh, areas. So that's the safety moment for today. We hope you all keep safe and I uh, will get to see you again in November for the monthly technical meeting as well as all other programs that will happen after today. Thank you. So moving on, we'll call on the section uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Adebola Bada to give us a welcome address. Nobody was hearing me. No, we, we could hear you. Can you hear me now? All right. I heard you. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, there are echo or so, and this thing is resounding. But I'm happy you can hear me. So thank you very much, uh, Moses. Uh, holding brief also for the program's chairman, who can be available today. Uh, so thank you, everyone, that have joined this. I think we've been a bit lagged behind. Uh, but we are having a very interesting uh, topic today by one of our own uh, presenter. And we also have one of our own moderator also. And I was joking uh, just before this that, in fact, they came so early. So it's like going for a wedding. The most important thing, first of all, is the husband and the wife. They need to be present in the church. So it's not like every other person are there and they are not there. So when those two people are there, okay, we can roll. So thank you very much uh, for coming so early. It, it, it gives us less trouble. And then people will continue to join. Uh, and I remember as Moses uh, highlighted about the uh, issue we are having now for the end uh, SARS. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I should call this one also pandemic. It's like we have COVID-19 pandemic. So we have a big issue now. And But uh, just let us be law abiding. Let's try as much as possible to keep ourselves safe. Let's keep our families safe. Uh, we're having high uh, paradigm change in the country, uh, but let's let's keep safe as much as we can. Uh, our family needs us, and SP2 needs us as much as possible. So thank you very much. Uh, and, and then I hope we enjoy uh, this uh, monthly uh, technical meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, SC. So moving on, we'll be introducing the moderator. Uh, the moderator will start uh, the first task once it's introduced, which will be the introduction of the presenter. But uh, we'll go right away for the introduction of the moderator. So we're going to read a brief citation of the moderator so that we know who exactly he is. Our moderator today is not a person than, uh, I don't know why people like to use the word, no other person. So our moderator today is Mr. Ulubenga Daudu, a production technologist in field development and execution in Shell. I suppose it's SPDC. So here is a citation. Daudu Ulubenga Benga started his career with the Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria as a production technologist in the field studies and development team, where he developed conceptual completion designs, where potentials among other things for about six oil and gas development projects. He went on to further join the wells reservoir and field management team, where he maximized and sustained production from gas wells in the largest gas field in SPDC, ensuring LN and LNG gas supply was maintained. Benga currently works as a production technologist in the field development and execution team, responsible for delivering new oil and gas to the company portfolio. Benga holds a master's degree in chemical process engineering from University College London. Prior to that, he had obtained a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from University of Lagos. He has been a member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers for over 15 years. He's also a member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. 
He championed a couple of initiatives in SPDC, which includes the first novel intervention in high pressure gas well to improve productivity, which he wrote and presented at the 2018 NICE conference. This was deployed successfully and increased production by over 240 million standard uh, cubic feet per day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our to moderate our technical uh, meeting for the month of October, Mr. Olubenga Daudu. Okay, so we assume that our moderator has taken his seat virtually, and uh, we'll move on to the next uh, event, which is uh, the moderator introducing the speaker of the day. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Simeo, you have to change the slides now. We can hear you. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that um, good uh, introduction. I'll move on to introduce the speaker, um, Dr. Ndubisi Yu Okereke, who is a lecturer at the Department of Petroleum Engineering, Federal University of Technology, away. OK. So, um, so Dr. Ndubisi has over seven years industrial experience, cutting across project management, cost estimation, procurement, and development on technical and commercial bids. Some of the major projects he has been involved in include review of severe slogging, mitigation strategy, for Chevron's Agbami oil field, swamp dredging slash walkover operations of typical swamp oils, wells, such as maintenance of Belema oil, eight, nine, and 10 for SPDC, Chobekiri capital dredging project for SPDC, Alakiri gas plant access dredging for, for SPDC, 280,000 million million stock time, uh, million cubic land reclamation project at Bonny Island, and LNG 6 plus project worth over 500,000 USD dollars. He's a member of the Society for Underwater Technology. He has also involved in pre-feed project for Santos Basin in Brazil, where he worked with the flow assurance team to develop a flow assurance strategy for an oil field. He's very competent in the development of OGA for flow assurance studies. He has over 15 publications relevant to the oil and gas industry. Research and consultancy and interests include flow assurance with emphasis of slogging prediction and mitigation development of cost-effective field development options for marginal oil fields, development of strategies to improve the availability of gas in Nigerian market, and development of business strategies for new energy startup companies, renewable energy-based companies. It is my, my privilege to introduce again, Dr. Ndubisi Okereke. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Appreciate So I... Can I go okay. ahead and Doctor, share? Yeah, Dr. Okereke, you can uh, share now. Ahead. Okay, thank you very much, my SC. So good, good evening, everyone. I, I, I hope you can good hear evening. me. So, no, can, can you hear me? Yes, very yes, clear. We can hear you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. So without uh, taking much of our time, uh, once again, I appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Benga Daudu for the wonderful introduction. 
and I appreciate the entire executive uh, of uh, Section 103, the section chair and the entire team for this opportunity. So I'll, I'll kick off without wasting our time. Uh, this evening, I'll be giving a presentation on techno-economic comparison of self-lift and gas lift severe slug mitigation techniques in deep water scenario. Uh, particularly, one of the interesting and uh, new uh, concepts which this presentation will bring about is uh, the concept of self-lift. So I'd like you to pay uh, good attention to the concept uh, because it is uh, very new uh, in terms of application. Uh, no uh, deep water field has applied this uh, technique, but uh, studies both from my PhD work and some other research I've done in recent times have proven that it could be a viable uh, severe slug mitigation technique. And I hope for us to interact more in that regard and see what can come up from it. I also appreciate the co-authors of this uh, work because this paper uh, was published in the most recent NAIS 2020, virtual NAIS. So by way of outline, uh, I'll go to the background and problem statement uh, that has necessitated the need for this study. I will look at the concept of uh, severe slogging. I will look at the concept of self-lift and gas lift, but I'll lay more emphasis on self-lift because I presume most of us uh, have a good understanding of gas lift, but I'll still explain uh, that as well. Then I will make focus on the particular case study that was captured in this work, a deep water case study based on a sample field within West Africa. And so we we'll spent some time on that. And then the key results, key findings, and the conclusion. So uh, by way of uh, background and uh, problem definition, with COVID-19 uh, came a, a complete halt, as it were, to a lot of activities that uh, need uh, oil and gas, uh, you know, more emphasis on oil, especially travel. Transportation is one of the key, um, uh, key, key aspects that requires a lot of our uh, oil product. And so with COVID-19, there was a complete halt in transportation, both the flights and both transport. And so we see a dip, as we can see here from sometime uh, around January, up to somewhere around March, we see a dip in the oil demand. And so with this dip, obviously it puts a lot of pressure on production from uh, deep water uh, facilities because it's uh, quite expensive to produce from deep water. So if we continue on this part, but open, things are beginning to change with uh, on easing of lockdown. But again, we can see some countries uh, in Europe getting back to lockdown. So all these will also affect uh, oil demand. And so there is need for optimization of our production costs. It's critical for us to ensure uh, we have a, a, a sustainable bottom line at the end of the day. So another key thing is uh, severe slogging uh, could lead to as much as possibly 50% drop in production because once severe slogging occurs, the tendency of your pipeline riser section being plugged by almost half as a result of liquid slug settling at the riser base and you know occupying a lot of portion that could allow easy flow of your multi-phase stream to your top size and your separator. So that you don't want to happen. Then this could also lead to very poor separation on the uh, within your separator because you'll be having fluctuations in your multi-phase stream between your liquid phase and the gas phase. As well, with the fluctuation in the liquid phase and gas phase, you could also have potential trips of within the inlet of your separator, which you don't want. As well, there are possibilities of structural failure within your pipeline riser system. So these are all key issues that need attention. So the concept of severe slogging uh, this con the, the concept of severe slogging occurs mainly uh, at low mass flow rate or low flow rate when 
your uh, reservoir pressure begins to drop and you begin to have low flow rates. So what you begin to experience mostly is that your liquid, the liquid section of your multi-phase stream begin to uh, settle at the low points of your pipeline riser system, as in this figure one. You can see from uh, the section one of the figure, uh, blockage of the riser bed, sort of the liquid settling down because they are flowing at low, low flow rate. There's not enough pressure to push it up effectively. And so when this continues, you begin to have accumulation of liquid. And over time as well, sometimes you could have gas coming from behind to push off this liquid uh, that has accumulated this riser base. And with that, you begin to have kind of a gallop within your pipeline riser section. And that creates a lot of uh, structural uh, challenges for your pipeline riser section as well. When, when you arrive, with, when the liquid and gas phase arrives with such fluctuation within the inlets of your separator, it could lead to trips, as I mentioned earlier. And so we, you begin to have this cycle of up and down movement. That's the whole idea of uh, severe slogan. So the next slide is uh, the self-lift. What do we mean by self-lift? Um, the idea of self-lift uh, is that you, you are able to tap off your associated gas that is coming from your wellhead uh, via a smaller bypass pipe, a smaller conduit of pipe, and you're tapping that off from your pipeline section, and then you're tap in, tapping that into your riser section. And so the whole idea is uh, how do we reduce the associated cost with gas lift? Because gas lift is associated with a lot of cost in compressing the gas from the top sites to inject within your riser base. So how do we manage that? That's uh, what gave birth to this idea. This wasn't uh, fully an original idea of mine. This was muted sometime in 1995 by Babuto. But my work tried to readapt it to um, a typical deep water field for the very first time. Because most of the work done by Babuto, Feber et al. in 1991, Tangesdal and some other researchers have been at experimental level. So the gas concept of gas lift is in the fig four. So we have gas, pure gas, you know, gas at certain flow rates, of course, a reasonable flow rate that it can be able to push off your liquid slugs. And then you send that in through your riser somewhere around your riser base. And so this is the whole idea of, uh, of uh, gas lift. So the next slide, we begin to talk about the case study particularly. So here we have a typical deep water field over 1,000 meters uh, riser section, uh, uh, more precisely about 1,400 meters uh, water depth thereabout. And the pipeline section, roughly about 2,700 meters. And, uh, this field actually has about 20 wells, but uh, uh, two wells that were commingled uh, on one of the loops was taken out particularly because from the field uh, data gotten, this field had experienced uh, hydrodynamic slogging. I make that clear, hydrodynamic slogging when it was flowing at about 3,000 BOPD. So what this study did was to, first of all, initially model that hydrodynamic scenario to be sure that we are getting what is uh, what was experienced in the field. And then subsequently, organ model was tuned by lowering the mass flow rates at these uh, source points or inlet points. That's the well X1 and well X2, uh, lowering those flow rates to initiate severe slogging. So when that happened, we now try, began to try both self-lift and gas lift to see how they will behave uh, within this severe slogging scenario, which I will show you much later. So there's the flu properties of the field, you know, CO2 composition point H1, nitrogen point 13. Uh, it's important to see the methane composition is relatively high for 3.3 uh, more percent. And uh, the other compositions are there. So this was modeled in PVT seam. So you, you need to model the fluid in PVT seam, which is uh, attached to it. Uh, Alga main package. And once you model that, you can now initiate and run that as if it's uh, uh, to mimic the real field scenario uh, of the same fluid. So that's that. So in FIGSIS, we, we have uh, 
a scenario of the hydrodynamics logging, which occurred at about 3,000 BOPD, being mimicked uh, via the model, the auger model. So we tuned in, or rather we, we set up the model for this very case with similar inputs from the field. And then we ran that and we experienced similar hydrodynamics logging trend with fluctuation between uh, 58.7 bar and uh, 59.2 bar. We see this uh, very serious fluctuation continuing for uh, quite some time because this is a trend plot. And so with that, we moved on to the next stage because uh, one key thing when you're running a simulation is your ability to build confidence in the results you have. That's very important for you to uh, move ahead. So then we, uh, this is still the auger GUI. We have the similar, well, X1, well, X2. Uh, and we now have the pipeline riser section. This very section here, it, it's not necessarily uh, geometrically uh, uh, same as, uh, it's not necessarily the way the shape is for the field. This is just the uh, interface, but within, your uh, geometry, you have to define that exactly as it is in the field. And that's what we have in table two. With the coordinates, the X axis and the Y axis being modeled to reflect exactly the field pipeline riser section. So we have around the inlet zero, we have 1066.8 meter, uh, the first around where the uh, first wellhead is. Uh, X1, and then around where the second wellhead is close to the riser base, we have that modeled. And then you have to also make sure you model the sectioning, gridding, like we know, especially for those that do uh, reservoir modeling and so much model, uh, some other modeling. It's important to make sure your sections are well gridded to allow for uh, a rigorous uh, interpretation of the results that will come via. Uh, the equations that are coded behind auger. In the, in the paper uh, for this work, you will see the key equations for auger. So those equations need to run rigorously around your data to be able to uh, generate results that will be as close as possible to what you should get in the field. So, and here we have the original conditions, or rather the, the conditions at which the field was tuned uh, initially, we have here, well, X1 at 13.15. Auger models uh, the flow rates in kilogram per second. So that's we, what we have here for well, X1, 13.15. For well, X2, 56.13. And then you model that. And so when we model that, we now had almost similar result to the field. The field uh, trend is uh, the one in, uh, in, in red. And the one in blue is the auger result. So we see around the wellhead, almost similar result. And then we have the trend following same, same way. But there's a variation of plus minus 15%, which is actually within the range of uh, variations for uh, other works in the, in the public domain uh, used where auger is used. So here, we uh, moderated the flow rates again in order to generate this severe slogging scenario. So here we have pressure fluctuating at the riser base between 30 bar to about 90 bar after the uh, inlet conditions have been tuned down the flow rate. So we have this high fluctuation, which is typically a case you will have for severe slogging. And then within the riser base as well, we have liquid fluctuating, at, or liquid uh, hold up. That's liquid packed up within your pipeline riser section, but these are the riser base, almost at 0.8, over 0.8 uh, liquid hold up, liquid fraction. And what that means is that your pipe section is almost 100% plugged with liquid. And that it's a, a lot of problem. So this is a clear case of severe slogging. So we establish this before we now begin to integrate uh, other things, uh, the mitigation strategies. So and here is our uh, GUI for the self-lift concept. And this is our GUI for the gas lift concept. So here we define the bypass pipe with this between this node seven and the inlet point. Then this valve one is for the takeoff point and the valve two is for the injection point. For the gas lift alone, 
uh, the gas leaf was integrated via this section, but this is just uh, running the gas to the riser base section without tapping off any other gas. That's why we don't have valve one here. And so this is the geometry for the self-lift case, uh, fully uh, clearly adapted for reputability uh, of research work, which is very key. And so this are the sets of results that we begin to have. For this self-lift scenario one, and the scenario one means we have uh, the valve opening for, uh, we have the valve opening for uh, valve one at one, which means it's fully open, valve two at 0.85, and uh, four inches pipeline diameter is the bypass size for this case. And then the liquid fluctuation, uh, which we have for the, uh, the uh, other case here is um, we begin to have liquid fluctuating for, uh, at the top sides almost up to uh, 0.207, though not too bad, but it could still be worked on. So here we see self-lift uh, able to manage to... Uh, it's important to note that the, uh, the top side arrival pressure was designed to be 20 bar. So that's where we aim to have it stabilized. At. But we had some fluctuations there, although it's close to exactly 20 bar, but we still have some fluctuations. So we see other scenarios. Here we have valve one at one fully open and valve two at 0.65. That's the percentage of the opening of the valve. And the essence of uh, moderating this valve opening is to be able to allow the gas that is being tapped off from the uh, downstream from the pipeline section that is going into the riser section to jet in into the riser at a, a reasonable pressure to be able to break the liquid slugs that are accumulated at that section. So we also have uh, uh, some changes here, but not still very suitable. So then for the gas leaf scenario, you can see a complete high level of fluctuation for where we had 5 kg per S of gas lift. Uh, we have some shouty, some high level of fluctuation showing that it wasn't able to mitigate that. And both at the top sides for the liquid hold up trend in figure 18, we still have some fluctuation. So for the scenario three, we have 7 kg per S of gas being injected. We had some level of fluctuation within the first uh, 3000 seconds. This is a trend plot. But over time, it began to stabilize as well. And so the liquid hold up, we had almost similar uh, thing. Then for the scenario four, we had for the self-lift here, this slide captures both the result for the self-lift and gas lift for scenario four. And in the scenario four, we have valve one fully open for the self-lift case, but valve two at 0.65. But it's important to note that we reduced our bypass diameter, internal diameter here to about three inches. And so we have almost perfectly stable uh, 20 bar about with some small initial fluctuations as well earlier. Then we have on the, for the ho liquid hold up, almost the same trend of initial fluctuation and uh, stabilizing uh, for, the, for the pressure, stabilizing at the top side about 20 bar as well. For the gas lift rather. But the gas leaf scenario here was run at 12 kg per S, which is uh, quite a reasonably high uh, uh, gas that will be compressed at that end. So here we try to summarize some of the key technical challenges uh, for both methods uh, in, in terms of comparison. Uh, for the self-lift, one of the thing that, uh, you know, from both peer review, some of the peer review journals have published some of the interrogations and some of the questions that have come with some of the peer reviewers. How can you handle uh, pigging when you have self-lift integrated in a pipeline riser section? And uh, my answer to that is that, you know, with intelligent pigging and smaller diameter pigs, you can still manage to pig within those regions uh, without having too much uh, problem, hopefully. And then for the conventional riser-based gas lift, this industry has a lot of uh, capacity in this area. And so pigging is not so much uh, a problem with that. Then another key finding from the result is on one of the uh, 
initial preliminary runs with uh, the self-lift, there were potential uh, cases of liquid ingress via the bypass getting into the riser section. And that had uh, you know, potentials of actually aggravating the severe slug scenario. So, but that was managed by reducing the bypass diameter furthermore uh, to ensure that we get more of gas getting into the riser base. And so, but for the gas lift uh, scenario, I, I don't think that's a, a problem with that. Uh, but then uh, for gas lift, you could have with the high cooling uh, effect that comes with gas, there could be potential uh, with Joe Thompson cooling effect, there could be hydrates issue. So that's uh, something worth thinking about. Then managing high riser base pressure, uh, you know, it's a very important thing. So with uh, self-lift, we're able to leverage on the associated gas and we didn't have to tap so much large gas volume to achieve management of riser base uh, pressure. But of course, we had to do that by managing, by doing a lot of uh, engineering around our bypass uh, pipe sizing and the valve uh, functionality as well. Then for the gas lift, we had very high volumes before we were able to uh, reduce our riser base uh, pressure. Then another thing is uh, uh, whether we could, uh, sorry, I don't, the last one is um, possible possible uh, installation and retrofitting challenges. It, from the research work so far, it, this concept will be better you know, applied when at the initial stage, when studies have been done and thought on you know, going ahead with it. Of course, that's still a long job because uh, this uh, concept is still something I'm working on, hopefully doing some large scale experimental studies on uh, in the future and as well as uh, trying hands on a possible few trial, I've been making some industry interactions in, in that regard. So in, it's, it would be better to install earlier. Another thing is to look at the selection criteria for the fields that it will be suitable for, because GOR, high GOR, is going to be a typical uh, key criteria to adapt uh, this self-lift concept. Uh, so, and then there needs to be a thorough engineering of the valving system of your bypass uh, to ensure as much as possible moderating on uh, ingress of uh, liquid. And, but for the conventional uh, gas lift, there's a lot of experience on that so far. So here we do some bit of cost comparison. Um, because of uh, time, I didn't put all the QLT uh, charts. The QLT charts are the production charts, but they are, they are very much available in the paper. So here I try to summarize the production uh, derived both from the self-lift and the gas lift for the various scenarios. So for scenario one, we had about 1372.56 meter cube per day. And for the scenario two, for self-lift, we had uh, 1370. Uh, bear in mind, we are just considering those two wells, well X1 and well X2, the total cumulative production from them and then under this self-lift condition. Then scenario three, 1370 meter cube per day. Scenario four, 1372.25. And for scenario four, we use the three inches bypass diameter. That's also important to take note of. Then we have the scenario one for the gas lift where we applied basically two kg per S and uh, we had 15, 37.79 meter cube per day production. We had 15 to 8.79 meter cube per day for the scenario two with five kg per S. Then with seven kg per S, we have uh, 15, 52.38. And then for the 12 kg per S, we have 4218.14 meter cube per day. So we have some variation in production uh, with, of course, the, uh, the, the gas leaf scenario actually uh, giving us higher production. But uh, bear in mind that for the ones we really had very good variation, the volume of gas compressed was quite high. So that's what we had in terms of variation. 165.23 one, one meter cube per day variation in production for uh, the first scenario. Second scenario, 1528.27. The third scenario, 182.38. Then the third scenario with huge gas, uh, 12 kg per S compressed, we had 2845.89. And variation in terms of percentage, 11.54 for the 
for 10.74 for the first one, 11.54, second one, 11.57, which for me is not so much uh, variation, although of course uh, this, this means a lot in USD anyway, uh, but uh, I, I think the variation is not so, so much when we consider you know, the installation we will have because you know on the top side you have need to have your compressors which comes with the cost uh, you need to now compress the gas and power the gas then which comes with the cost which will be seen in the next table so here in the next table we have a detailed analysis of the compression cost associated with the um uh, powering the gas for the various scenarios of gas leak for the scenario one with two kg per meanwhile the data for the gas was uh, for the compression was gotten uh, courtesy of acre, acre solutions they were gracious to support the the the, uh, the research work at when i was uh, running my phd because this is actually an offshoot of my phd work so you know they supported that so that's where we got this initial conversion values for our power compression and then so subsequently for the various cases 2 to 12 we now applied the conversion rates on them so with that, we have for the scenario one, in terms of power consumption, about 18,076.49 kilowatts, coming at about 2530.71 uh, dollars per uh, total USD, uh, because it is at uh, 0.14 USD per kilowatt. Then for, um, for scenario two, uh, we had about 90,000 plus uh, kilowatts, for the compressing the 5 kg per s down that entire uh, 1000 4000 meters water depth there about we have the uh, terms of usd 12653.54 uh, usd deployed for that compression then we had for scenario 3 about 88574 usd deployed for compressing the gas and then for scenario 4 with 12 kg per s we had quite uh, over 10 Thousand, over 10 million USD deployed to compress that huge volume of gas. And so this, for me, are things that needs uh, a lot of attention. And it's important to also know that this simulation, this one was run basically for 24 hours to reflect a one-day scenario. So here, we also look uh, critically at what we did with the power and the, for the self-lift scenario and a summary of the cost. And so uh, we begin to see here as well for gas lift, uh, the revenue from the production is listed here. There's still a huge, uh, there's still a, a relative uh, uh, variation in, in, in production for the first three scenario and quite some huge variation for the fourth case. But then uh, as well, we see here the difference in US dollar about 6,000 uh, eight, four. This difference is, uh, you know, when we bring in the production from self-lift and the revenue from accrued, accrued from that production. So we have five, eight for scenario one, five, eight, zero, one, eight point one, one for scenario one. And then the difference in US is about six, nine, eight, four point two, seven for scenario two from self-lift. The production is one, three, seven, zero point two, five from those two wells. We had revenue of about 57931.88 and difference of about 6,000 something. Uh, for scenario three, we had production of 1370 from self lift. From gas lift, we had 5, 1552.38, difference of about 7,000. Then for the last one, we had quite a huge difference. But of course, we also remember the high COPEX, uh, CAPEX, sorry, OPEX of the uh, compression cost. So for the self lift, uh, one key advantage that jumps out is that we don't need to compress gas. Uh, another uh, thinking, which is actually part of a, a new work I'm working on, is we could also consider uh, adapting self-lift and moderating the gas we will compress just to improve the effectiveness of the whole uh, 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 system in terms of uh, production now. So because with self-lift here, we can moderate slogging but in terms of production, we had more with the gas lift scenario. So I think a combination of both process could also be something uh, worth uh, thinking about. So uh, in way of uh, summarizing the findings and the key conclusions for the work, um, sorry, uh, I'm trying to move.
try to move uh, this the zoom screen off so that I can uh, tidy up on that. Okay, so basically we have self lift uh, slug mitigation technique, being able to stabilize liquid hold up and pressure at the riser base, uh, and as well at, at the top side to about 20 bar, which is the design uh, inlet pressure at the separator with the bypass diameter of th three inches, giving us the best uh, result. Then for the gas lift, this was also done very well, but it, the best result was at about 12 kg per S with associated huge gas volume and of course associated high OPEX. And uh, another important finding from the work, it, it, it's better to uh, consider a bypass pipeline diameter ratio of uh, uh, one is to two. That's to say, you know, the bypass diameter should at most times be at least half of the diameter of the pipeline section from where you're tapping off the gas, because this would help as well as with the help of your valves at that takeoff point being regulated properly, it could help to get you to jet out gas from the associated stream at a relatively high pressure as well. When you manage the valve and at the injection point on your riser base properly and have a, a suitably sized bypass diameter, there will be likely a, a better tendency to break your liquid slugs within your riser column. So um, another uh, important finding is that there's a potential 50% reduction in volume of gas uh, compressed with the self-lift or, or, or even more, you know, because when you uh, use only self-lift, you're not actually compressing any gas. Then there is need for thorough candidate selection because uh, wells with high GOR will come handy for self-lift. Uh, wells with high water cut may also be a problem to self-lift. So these are things that need to be considered properly uh, in, 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 uh, in recommending self-lead for a particular set of wells for ma managing the severe slug scenario. Then uh, we also look at the current wellhead flow rates for uh, such wells that we want to implement it on. They have to also be at relatively good rate to enhance what we are tapping off the gas, the gas we are tapping off and to ensure that we can break the liquid slug effectively. And so that's basically that. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate PTDF. Uh, they sponsored my PhD work and uh, they helped me very uh, strongly in accessing data, but because you all know data for us in the academia is a lot of a big deal. Uh, so they helped with that and uh, DPR did a lot of good work. So I'll thank the executive once again for this opportunity and hand over to the moderator. Uh, for the uh, rest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ndubisi, for a fantastic uh, presentation. I was really excited because um, I've been someone that uh, knows a lot about the gas lift and flow assurance okay. issues as well in the oil and gas wells. Okay. Um, okay we've struggled really with combining both for solutions but you have just showed that in wow. your in your wow. paper and your presentation fantastic work yeah. so Thank i'll go know. ahead and give a summary of what i've learned so far from dr Undubisi. okay okay i mean it started off by um giving us a background of working we're experiencing in this case study which is hydrodynamic slugging. And he explained how you could have those kind of slugging when you're having low flow rates. And he also talked about the deep water scenario where you can find it mostly your pipeline and your riser. Okay, so we offer two solutions, the self-lift and the gas lift. And he also described the concepts of both self-lift and gas lift. Self-lift is being using the associated gas from the well, and gas lift being introducing the external gas using a compressor. Okay, and then he shared the, he shared the, the, the case study, and then he also shared the results. Now, uh, one of the things I was able to discover from what he shared 
Okay, is uh, the, 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 he looked at a gas lift, and he looked at the at, at the the uh, the self lift, and he did a, not only did a technical comp comparison, but he also did an economic comparison, which is uh, what you call a robust uh, um, research. Okay, because you don't only just go for the uh, technical, you go for the money as well. Okay, so some of the things he also compared uh, the challenges for both scenarios because it's not all Christmas in our industry. We have challenges, and he was also able to give us mitigations. That means he has really thought through this uh, this study, and had done a lot of his own work. Okay, so any company that's trying to adopt this stuff, they need to also think about the mitigations. Among things allow pigging. You can have a liquid ingress, high, high riser base pressure, um, possible installation retrofitting challenges. Okay, and then in the cost comparison, he made it very clear that self lift, being an associated gas, it's a much a lot cheaper than the gas lift, and so also is the fact that. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, yes, can I hear you now? Okay, yeah, so right. Normally, did he go ahead and um, tell us about the um, the fact that the gas, the self lift is a lot cheaper and the gas lift is a lot more expensive, but also the value you get from it is also um, higher on the gas lift than on the self lift. Uh, what also interested me finally was uh, when he was concluding and saying that he's looking at an, a situation where he can combine both which I think is a very balanced view um, because I, I, I also see value in combining the two of them. And uh, we concluded by like, giving us um, a couple of things we need to consider, especially with self lift where candidate selection is very important. We need to, and that's why I had a simulation at first to match um, is, is the, the model with the actual, so able to tell what kind of slogan it was seen in that field. And the, so the candidate selection is very, very important. And he also looked at um, um, the, 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 the diameters of the, the comparison of the pipeline and the rise out diameters. And that's also very important in the self lift. In the gas lift, um, even though you, it's all good, you have high value, you have high volume. However, you need to look at the high OPEX associated with that as well. So at the end of the day, my take home here is that gas lift you would prefer, depending on who you are, but a combination could also work better for you. So Dr. Andubiso Keke, once again, thank you very much for a very interesting evening session, technical work and very robust economic work uh, so far. These are the kind of things that we wish for in the industry. Thank you to, very uh, much. Yeah. Thank you. So I have um, just um, one or two questions. The first one, uh, your graph on the pressure yes, against uh, time, was it what pressure I will, uh, were you plotting there? Was it tubing head pressure, riser head pressure? For some of them, most of them actually were riser based pressure. Uh, okay. If I open them for figure nine, it's specifically the riser based pressure because that's where the liquid slugs accumulate and that's uh, the potential place that gets more pressurized. Then the liquid uh, hold up here as well is around the riser based area, so not necessarily the tubing head. Okay. Then um, also what I could see was that either case you have a hold up at first, but then it normalizes. Is that what yeah. you were trying to tell us? Yes, yes. With the slogging scenario being necessitated by low flow rates from your wareheads, uh, mm. you begin to have those uh, plug around your riser base. But uh, when you begin to deploy that self-lift or gas lift, and do your combinations in the takeoff and your injection point properly, you begin to have that ease off the liquid pack within your okay. riser base section. Once you ease off that pack, you begin to have a stratified scenario almost. All right. And so that's okay, why we yeah. begin to notice the pressure of pattern out as well. Okay, great, great, great. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so I'll open the floor for other questions from the, uh, from the group. Um, I have a question from YouTube. 
Um, I could just okay. say it from YouTube channel. So it's right, from Daniel. It's from Daniel Maduagu. He says, uh, for a well with I sans and finds migration, what will be the corresponding mm. effects in both self-lift and gas lift system? This is from YouTube, Daniel Maduagu. Okay. With, with, with a well with high sand, that could potentially mean uh, some ingress of not just liquid now, but sand within the bypass. So I think, uh, I didn't think of that, but that that's a good uh, question uh, coming through. So I think there could be potential, depending on how the sizing of the bypass is and, uh, uh, and all that there could be potential ingress of sand within the bypass. So that could also be a potential challenge. But as well, depending on the, your flow rate at the warehead, it could sweep uh, the sand all across through your pipe, your riser base, instead of going, uh, being, instead of the sand being tapped off uh, into the bypass. Because of course the sand is more dense. So I, I think, uh, those would be my response uh, with respect to that. So Most there's a follow-up. Sorry, there's a follow-up. Yeah, okay. There's a follow-up question. Uh, it says, will yes. it be near correct? This time it is yeah. a political correct. It just said, will it be near <laughs> correct to assume the riser base pressure is almost equal to the tubing head pressure? Uh, in, in, in bracket after eliminating frictional losses along the pipeline. Okay, everyone, Lina, hmm. or the um, I, I don't think so. I don't think so because you're having frictional losses okay. along the line. So I doubt if it will be the same. It will, it will definitely deplete along the line. Okay, that's all from YouTube for now. Uh, we can check the shots on Zoom. I can take it, uh, Dr. Kereke, listen. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, he said, uh, this from Adrian uh, Okwere. Great pre presentation, doctor. Very okay. great presentation, in okay. fact. And he says, uh, his question is, what okay. level of smartness Thank you very much. or automation can we okay. introduce into this system? Based on historical performance and sensors, can we get a system that predicts the onset of liquid loading or slogging and then automatically kicks off self-lift or gas lift okay. to get an optimized injection rate? Yes, that, that, that's actually possible. That's possible with the aid of auger and maybe some initial uh, simulations around some maybe data uh, from, but I think this will work better if maybe you have one or two wells producing and you do some of the runs with those wells and maybe as you bring on some other wells, as some other wells come on stream, some of the trends which both the real data and your further simulation work on those real data can help you in uh, improving your prediction, make it smarter, and uh, help you in uh, adapting either self-lift or gas lift as the case may be. But with the aid of auger, which is used actually in most of the fields, both in Nigeria, or other parts of West Africa, we have auger for this flow assurance works real time running on the system. So with the aid of auger and some initial field results, some prediction can be developed 
and uh, we could even develop some chat around it and most importantly the processes could be automated uh, within your control station on the FPS so you can be able to activate uh, your self lift or gas lift as the case may be especially in terms of valve control uh, to be able to control it uh, at the right openings depending on uh, the results from your uh, initial simulation work in terms of predicting the trends. Uh, is the moderator there? Uh, uh, Moses, are you there? Hello. Okay, you are in. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm looking at the chat and I'm not seeing any more questions. Do we still have any questions? Uh, okay, another one from YouTube just came in. Uh, it says, okay. can the application of gas lift system introduce the risk of hydrates formation along the flow line. Absolutely, absolutely. Because gas lift is associated with what we call Joe Thompson cooling effect, where the temperature of the multiphase fluid stream is effectively lowered. And once the temperature is lowered, especially the gas part, and it interacts with water, that's a potential uh, hydrate uh, uh, problem especially if your hydrate formation temperature for that fluid is relatively low. So that's uh, very possible. But that's one of the problems I said there with gas lift. It's a possibility. OK, moderator, over to you again. Nothing from YouTube. Okay, so a follow-up to that Adrian's question. It okay. might also be okay to, um, if in, in investigating the smartness of the system, uh, have you considered okay. the cost of that also? That also has additional cost to your gas okay. scenario. Mm. Uh, at this moment, I've not... Uh, consider that elaborately. I, I would say it's pro part of uh, some further work, which I am doing, hoping to get one or two postgraduate students to actually do some further work in that area. Because it, it will need a lot of proper costing. Uh, how do you integrate uh, the control for those valves? What are the cost implications uh, to have effective uh, control of those valves. Uh, are there potential, uh, will there be potential need for interventions uh, on that? And what are the cost implications as well? So I think that that's, uh, those are things uh, still worth investigating. Okay, What's, one thing that is also important is the need for a good candidate selection. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So in all those scenarios, um, be it sand production, be it um, okay. slogging, okay. be it other flow assurance, mm. I want to think carefully before you are, uh, you use this uh, gas lift and uh, self lift scenario. Absolutely. Okay. Hi there, how are you today? So I don't think there's further questions. No, not at all for me. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um 
for to the presenter, Dr. Ndebisi Okereke, very nice presentation. And uh, we can see everybody is congratulating you from all channels on our various pages. I just saw, I just, I just saw one of my uh, master students back at Cranfield raising his hand online. So I'm raising back yeah. to uh, NHU. Yeah. <laughs> Ikedna. And um, also, yeah. thank you to the moderator, Mr. Olibenga. That would be really appreciated. And for the point that, uh, in fact, for the fact that both of you came so early. This is one of the best we have seen that we have seen a moderator and a speaker coming <laughs> as early as possible. It makes the whole job easy. And then we were ready before the attendees came. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll continue this discussion, of course, on our various uh, social media spaces on LinkedIn and so on and so forth. So I'll hand over back to the secretary. Moses, are you there? Uh, Moses, are you there? Hello, Moses. Okay, so um, Simeon, you can you can put back the presentation slides so that let's see where we are. Uh, basically, right. we just okay. move. The speaker has to stop sharing. Okay. 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 So thank you, well, Doctor. I really that. appreciate thank it. Th yeah. Thank you very much, my sister. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we'll just have the next uh, 10, 15 minutes just to wrap up our section programs, information, and then we, so, we are out of it. Is that the S in the loop for you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Essie. Okay, go ahead. Yes, um, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I think it was a great session from uh, the speaker, the moderator, the questions from uh, different uh, channels. So it's a wrap for us on the technical side. Uh, the moderator has already done that. So we we'll hand over to the publicity chair for the question of the day. And without being introduced, immediately after the question of the day, the membership chair will give us uh, a talk about us. And then SC will tell us about our board members. At the same time, take the announcement. So it should go on up to now, starting from the publicity team. OK, good evening, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? We can, we can, hear, yeah, you. We can hear you. OK, good evening, everyone. Um, and a great presentation. Thank you so much, sir, and the moderator. Um, let me extend that to as well. Um, just to be fast, I think just go to the last time. Um, we we use this um, opportunity to just let people know this is still what we know as uh, the question of the day, but we only refined it uh, a bit as we see things changing. We called it uh, Know Your Industry um, uh, questions are in the sense that we're looking at, we are moving in a wider scope now, not just the oil and gas, we're talking of energy, we're talking of uh, economics now, we're talking of uh, a law uh, in petroleum, all that coming in together as uh, one. So we, are, we want it to be holistic, even safety. So the questions you see coming are things that want us to all be looking out for not just uh, questions you normally will solve for the drilling for for completions, for example, but about the the industry as a whole and and our our world in general and how the energy sector is really making its impact. So I want to thank everyone who took part um, in 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 this session. You will see on the slides the questions and the answers. So for those who attempted, um, you will see where your or maybe mistakes or the ones you got right were. But we want to congratulate especially the three people who got it right. Um, when, and when we are, we are assessing this, the criteria we take is who got the most questions right um, and where there are um, ties, we also put that. But so far, the last two we've done, we've not had ties as such. And um, we are looking initially to take the first uh, five. Uh, eventually, as time will go on, we will send you your... Uh, your certificate of participation on this um, to the winner. So congratulations for this uh, month of October. We have three, last month we had two 
Um, so congratulations, our first, uh, uh, first the winner for this was Israel Abassi from Uniport. He answered all the questions. I think you're here. So a big congratulations that um, you were able to take the time um, to, to go through this and get it all right. So congratulations, Israel Bassi. Uh, the second was Hilary Oboto, Oboto Rigi. I'm not sure I pronounced it right, but I know you shortened it to Hilary Obot. Um, from, he's a young professional. So congratulations, uh, Hilary. Um, and then the third was uh, Ithoro Kofi from UNUYO. That's uh, a big round of applause to them. They got uh, out of the four questions, um, they, we try to make sure that we keep also the, the best um, three out of uh, four. And we had like, these are the people that did a bit good in the, in the sense that they were, this was four, three and a half, and then three. So it, it, this was one of the best, uh, in terms of getting their the answers as precise as possible. So congratulations, a job well done. Thank you, and we'll keep it coming. And we want you all to be open uh, and continue to uh, explore, look out for things. This is opportunity to look. We are now in the, in the internet world space now where so much is being put out there. And that's what we are going to be looking at. How are people being informed of what is going on around them um, and what is changing or new things that are coming in? How are you uh, digesting it as we will share as much as possible too to make you um, get abreast with the industry as a whole? So thank you very much. And I hand over to um, membership. Thank you. Let's order now. Hello, uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, the publicity chair, for that wonderful Know Your Industry uh, presentation. Um, do we have the membership chair there or the assistant, please? Yes, please. Uh, if anyone is here, so if uh, you could go out to share the slides, Simeon. Good evening, everyone. Um, what a great presentation. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. And VC. Um, so let's just get to know SPE um, a bit. We are all, I, I, I assume most of us on this call are members of this great um, association. So let's know what this is about. Um, if, you, if you think of SPE, you think of an organization that doesn't make profit. So you, they call them NGO, but for us it's a professional association um, that does not um, aim at making profit. So here typically the members are engaged in um, development and production of energy resources, right? So when you look at it, you see a vast number of people, um, over 100, and 20,000 members globally. And you have SPE in about 123 countries worldwide. That, should, that goes a long way to tell you the kind of impact that this association is making in the lives of professionals, in the lives of students, in the lives of young, uh, just graduated professionals into the industry. The key resources, um, that SPE thrives on is basically around uh, technical knowledge. So it disseminates technical knowledge, it shares information around exploration, around development of oil and gas and the related technologies that we see. So if you wanna know the latest in technology in our industry, you just go to the SPE website and you will get a host of information that would improve your knowledge of our industry. So if we zoom it down a bit to um, our section 103 here in, in Port Harcourt, this section is the second largest in Nigeria and we have coverage in six states. Um, the student uh, chapters, uh, 
how fast they, 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 they are springing up. And, and this goes a long way to tell us how much students are beginning to tap into this resource base of SD that SD offers. The membership strength for this section is about 1,120 professional members and about 1,900 student members. And this is increasing as we continue the drive for membership. In 2020, we had several awards and the list is just listed there for you. But key to that is the, um, the SDI section award for excellence that, that we had for our section chair. So if you want to be a part of this great section, please hop on the boat, hop on the ship, hop on the horse. Just let's get this rolling. Um, what are the benefits, apart from the ones I've listed earlier, this, this, this is so structured that wherever your interest, you will find resources for it. So for education, we have an online base of education materials, trainings that are, you can't, you don't pay for these trainings. You just go there and you log on and you have trainings. We have webinars on several topics. All you do is just dial in and you are being impacted by global experts, right? Um, we also have um, a connect, a SP connect. This is focused on areas of, of interest. So if you're interested in business, you're interested in um, project management, there are several options for you on that platform as well. Um, so for us, the statistics for the section in terms of membership and, and what we're doing in the section is listed here. Um, if you want to, if you want to be a member of this section, please um, indicate your interests. We would give you the the form, an online link that would take you directly to a form where you then uh, fill in your details. You can make your payments to this account number on the screen. Um, further details can be provided. Just let us know by dropping a chat or contacting any of our board members that will be introduced to you shortly. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think that's it. So thank you. Thank you very much, um, our membership uh, co-chair. Um, thanks to everyone that attended this uh, event today, our monthly technical meeting for the month of October. Um, I think if you go to the previous slide, uh, just the slide that shows the, the, uh, the board exactly. So you can see on the screen, the board, we have a 17 uh, persons uh, committee, um, including the immediate past uh, chairman, who was also present in this meeting sometimes, I've, I've seen him. Uh, uh, so, and uh, you can, you must have seen also uh, the uh, membership chair and also the publicity chair that I've spoken just uh, before now. So thank you to everyone. Um, just very quick uh, information uh, just for us. Uh, in the beginning, we mentioned uh, regarding the uh, NSAS uh, movement that is going on. In fact, we started considering a lot of things, but uh, we can say maybe luckily we are still on virtual because actually we're planning to go into hybrid uh, to have some session where we will go physically and at the same time, some other people can watch uh, online but maybe we'll pause for the hybrid and we'll continue for the, for the virtual for the meantime. So, and we said, let's continue to keep safe as much as possible alongside our various uh, families. Um, um, Simeon, if you go to the, okay. So um, we have various uh, study groups just for you also to know. Um, the membership shared mentioned about if you want to a member, I think normally they should post a link, a membership share. Normally, you should post a link for people that want to become a member where you just put your link, you put your number, and then you put your email, and then the membership team is going to contact you, uh, basically. And also for our various study groups, uh, for people that are already members or people aspiring to be members, we have different study groups, uh, in fact. We have about eight of them. Um, Data Science just had a presentation yesterday, which was also viewed through YouTube and uh, 
also through Zoom. And throughout the rest of this month, up to the 31st, we'll be having various of these uh, groups making various presentations relating to their disciplines. So we want you to hook up with us on our social media spaces where you'll be seeing uh, various uh, publicities. Um, as you know, besides networking and besides uh, technical content that we are known for, uh, we are also an avid volunteer. So always, if you have passion to volunteer for anything, I think SP is, is the right place. Um, we have um, another information regarding the annual technical conference that is ongoing now, basically. Uh, it started with the students and young professionals. Normally, we should have done this in the US, uh, but this is the first time they have to turn it virtual because of the pandemic. So uh, on 27 to 29, we will have it online. And then, uh, as you know, um, protocol session is an outstanding session. So we'll be having our work also within that period. We, are, we also have um, a gentleman from University of Port Harcourt. His name is Isre Basi. And as you can see, it's one of the winners for the Know Your Industry. He will be representing, again, the African region uh, in the students' technical, content, uh, te uh, technical presentation contest, in fact. Uh, so we wish uh, Isre Basi uh, the very best as he goes to contest with other regions of the world. Uh, his presentation will be tomorrow, uh, 4.30 um, West African time, uh, in fact. Uh, so we wish you the very best. We know you are with us now. And uh, as we go along with you in your preparations, we know you are going to get the very best uh, for the work that you have put on for this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. And also from your screen, you can see in the whole of November, I mean, this is what our members enjoy. In the whole of um, November, we'll be having uh, this training for free for only members. So if you register and you are not a member, um, of course, we, we, we will find a way to make sure that you're a member uh, because it's, it's, it's better for you a member to get it free, oh, in yeah. fact. But you know what that means? So you won't get it free if you are not a member. So it's automating reservoir engineering and geosciences with Python. So it's five days in the month of November. So they staggered it over the weekends of November. Uh, and then we'll also be having some raffle for our students uh, so that, you know, this pandemic has also eat on our students. You can imagine them using their data for all this, but we're gonna have raffle for them so that most of our students from section 103 is gonna benefit and they'll be able to go alongside with this uh, training. Um, um, what else do we have for upcoming? Can you go? Okay. We also have on November 19, I think the publicity will be out next week. So for November 19, we are going to have uh, the distinguished uh, lecture series. So we are having someone from France. Normally it's supposed to be in Nigeria, uh, but because of also the pandemic and then SB International have said, uh, we have to make this uh, very So we'll be connecting with us from France. And this is a great presentation. It's from the Piper Alpha to Macondo and 737 Max. So if you are in the industry, not only in the oil industry, because uh, like 737 Max is not really. So, but Piper Alpha, Macondo, we all know, and then 73 Max. So you can imagine it wants to see how the dangers of all this and how it affects uh, uh, the compliance culture of the oil and gas, uh, oil, the energy industry generally. Uh, this will be on 19th of November, but the publisher will go out next week, so you'll be able to, to connect uh, to us. So his name is uh, Dr. Thomas Intersier. Intersier is pronounced uh, in France. Um, so having said this, I would like to also recognize again the immediate past chairman, you know, George Uwa, he was present sometimes, uh, maybe he's not there now. Um, also to recognize all the officers of Section 103 that have been present. Uh, with us for this. Um, we have line of events, as you can see from your screen, uh, different events uh, packed for the remaining of this month from the Technica and also from our students, from our YPs. Uh, just continue to follow us on all the social media spaces. If you type three portal courts, you are going to get us in all the social media spaces and it's very active. So you can always put your comments or anything. We're going to 
uh, answer you. So thank you very much um, uh, for all the support and we hope you continue to be part of our programs. And then I will always continue to say that um, uh, you keep safe uh, with this um, NSAS, um, I, will, I will call it maybe pandemic, <laughs> but it's NSAS uh, crisis we are having. We hope Nigeria will go through this and then we come out strong again. Uh, take care of yourself, take care of your families and uh, I wish you the very best. Thank you very much for all your support. And then let's continue to engage uh, on social media spaces. On, so on, uh, it doesn't end here. When we have presentations, we launch it and then we continue to talk about it uh, and then we see where it takes us. Of course, maybe we can make uh, good recommendations that could also support our industry and help our developing country, um, including Nigeria. So thank you again. Thank you, everyone. And I would have said I wish you safe journey back, back home, but you are already at home. So take care of yourself and your family. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all for me. I think we go into the uh, prayer session, I think. So we need a volunteer to just give us a closing uh, prayer, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The glory. We thank you very much, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, the member of the SBA. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Thank you, Lord, for your provisions. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the knowledge you have imparted in us this evening. But I will say, let this knowledge be a part and part of us and continue to improve in our professional and drive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your For Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 So please, uh, thank you for the people remaining. Please quickly put on your video if you can. Uh, I, I hope, Simeon, you are taking pictures. Just a uh, picture moment. Uh, just uh, for 30 seconds, uh, we start counting now. So, Simeon, take your pictures and then we go. Thank you. You too, you can take your pictures to yourself. Eh? <laughs> And then we'll post this. Um, and the recording also will be available to members, huh? to SP members, Section 103.